truth that's in that in that song and thank you for uh, the good uh, singing this evening well if you have your Bible open to Revelation chapter number one once again Revelation chapter number one we've been looking at a lot of introductory things we're going to start getting into uh, some of the verses themselves I want to think tonight about the instructions that was given to John uh, John has given some specific instructions here for the writing and the recording of the book of the Revelation. And so let's read from uh, beginning with chapter 1. I'll read down through verse number 11, and then we'll look at one other verse, verse number 19, uh, this evening also. So Revelation chapter 1, beginning with verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and of the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea. Now notice verse number 19 also where the Lord Jesus says this, Write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. 
Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, we do thank you for the reading of the Word of God this evening and pray now that you would indeed speak to our hearts and teach us through your Word. Draw us closer to yourself that we might learn more of you. Equip us that we might better serve you. And we'll thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Thank you for standing for the Word of God this evening. In, in the beginning of our study uh, here in the book of Revelation, uh, we, we've had some introductory matters, and we kind of continue with uh, those introductory thoughts as well here in chapter 1. But let me just remind you that we have learned that the main person of the Revelation is Jesus. In Revelation chapter 1, it's the Revela uh, chapter 1 verse 1, it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And the meaningful purpose uh, we see in verse 1, verse 2, uh, primarily that God gave it to Jesus, who gave it to his angel, who gave it to John for the purpose to show it unto his servants. That's the purpose of it. And then the marvelous promise in verse number 3, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. And then the major prophecy of Revelation is in verse 3, in that latter uh, statement there, For the time is at hand. And that's why John was told not to seal this book up. Don't close this up. The time is now. And the time is at hand right now in our generation today. There's no doubt about that, that we are in uh, the last days. But it's important to remember that, the, that Revelation is really all about the second coming of Jesus Christ. We, we understand that. And it really is, in, in essence, a fulfillment of what the Apostle Paul uh, spoke of in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. You remember what he said beginning with verse number 7, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7, And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe. That's what Revelation is about. It's about that time that Paul wrote about that is going to be coming to this earth. It is the coming of Jesus Christ upon this earth, the punishment of, of wickedness, and the bringing in of God's righteousness upon, upon the earth. And, and so it's important to remember uh, that emphasis and, and that fulfillment there. The recorder of Revelation is John. He was John the disciple, John the apostle. He refers to himself in the Gospel of John as the, as the, uh, the disciple whom Jesus loved. And, and that's who John is. Uh, there's a specific order that is given to us here, an order of communication in verse 1. God gave it to Jesus. Jesus has given it to, uh, to his angel. And it's passed on to John to record for us, now notice that the purpose of it or the reason or the recipients really of the book of Revelation is unto his servants, it said in verse 1. You remember what we said about that word servants, it means bond slaves. It means uh, those of us that have been born again, we are spiritually mature believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and we recognize ourselves as no longer belonging to ourselves anymore. We belong to Jesus because he bought us with his blood. Amen. And so we're his servants. We're his, we're his bond slaves. And then I remind you of what the Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, where it says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto, unto the him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And so we must realize that, that the unsaved will have a lot of trouble being able to understand the book of Revelation as well as the carnal Christian. A, a Christian that may find themselves in a backslidden state. They're going to have trouble understanding the book of Revelation. You've got to be a, a spiritual believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You've got to be right with God. Uh, spiritually mature, sold out to Jesus. You're a bond slave. You're his servant. That's who the Revelation is written to. It is written to the servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so here's some good advice for all of us 
Let's just be sure our heart is right with God when we study this book of Revelation. Amen. Because it will go a long way to enabling us to be able to understand it and interpret it uh, properly. And so, in the Revelation now, as we begin, you, uh, the, the one who is recording these words, John, he is given some very clear instructions. And we see this in, in chapter 1. And so let's notice what they are. First of all, in verse number 2, in verse number 2, he, he was instructed to record the Word of God. He was to record the Word of God. John says of himself, having uh, been given this revelation by the angel which came from Jesus, he says in verse 2, who bear record of the Word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that, uh, that he saw. And so John says he's, he, he bears record of the word of, uh, word of God. His instructions are to record God's Word. The message of Revelation, understand then, is this. It is not John's message. Amen? It is not John's message. It is God's message. Revelation is God's message. John's responsibility was not to uh, give a commentary, but his responsibility rather was to make an accurate record and uh, as a witness to all that Jesus would show him and would, and would reveal to him in this marvelous book. And the thing about it is, if we'll really uh, understand it properly, we'll have to understand that that's the way all of the Bible is. Amen. That's the way all of Scripture is. John was an eyewitness. And the same thing is true about all the, uh, the writers of Scripture. In, in 2 Peter chapter 1, uh, let me show you what Peter says about, about himself and, and others as writers of Scripture. In 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter talks about, uh, about being an eyewitness of the Lord. Uh, I'll back up and read with uh, uh, verse number uh, 17. Well, let's back up to verse 16. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. For we have not uh, followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His majesty. And so Peter's letting us know that what he's writing about is the things that he's seen, uh, the things that he knows. And he's talking about the time when Jesus took himself and, 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 and James and John up to that mount and, and is referred to as the Mount of Transfiguration. Verse 17, uh, Peter says, For he received from God the Father honor and glory, where there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard and when, when we were with him in the holy mount. But then Peter goes on and applies this to all of Scripture. When he says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Peter's letting us know here that what he wrote and what Paul wrote and what John wrote and what James wrote and what the prophets of old in the Old Testament wrote, they wrote down the Word of God. Amen. They recorded God's Word. That's what Scripture is, a recording of the Word of God. Luke also uh, tells us of, of this, of being an eyewitness and recording the Word of God. In Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, verse 1 down through verse number 4. He writes, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they deliver them unto us, which, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. The certainty of those things. What's he, what does he mean? The certainty of the Word of God. Amen. The certainty of the Scriptures. John was given such instructions as that. 
to record the Word of God, the true Word of God. And so that was his instruction, record the Word of God. Number two, he was also instructed to write it in a book, to write it in a book. If you drop down to verse number 11 in Revelation chapter 1, verse 11, uh, where John heard the voice, it was the voice of Jesus. Verse 11 saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, uh, and what thou seest, write in a book. Do you see that? He's instructed to do that. Write the Word of God, record the Word of God, write it in a book, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Jesus told John uh, to, to record the Word of God and to write it in a book. Let me ask you a question. Aren't you glad that God's given you a book? Amen. Aren't you so glad that He has given you the Word of God? God has given us such a marvelous and a wonderful book. There is nothing else like it. It is a miraculous book for, me, for many people down through the centuries, down through the ages of time, have been inspired of the devil to try to destroy this book. But yet this book cannot be destroyed. It never will be destroyed. It has remained through all the attacks of the enemy. It was inspired of God, preserved by God, and, he, and, he, and we still got it, holding it in our hands today. Amen. I'm glad that John was instructed, write it in the book. I'm glad that, that Peter and James and the Apostle Paul were instru instructed to write and we've got it in the book. I'm glad that Jeremiah wrote it down. I'm glad Moses wrote it down. I'm glad David. I'm, I'm glad the prophets of old, Ezekiel and, 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 and Isaiah and the others, they all wrote it down. And God saved it for us, kept it for us, preserved it for us, and we have it in the book. Amen. Well, to be so glad for the book, the Word of God, the Holy Bible. And Jesus says in Matthew 24, verse 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Psalm uh, 12, Psalm 12, in verse 6 and verse 7, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. And God has done exactly that. Psalm 119, verse 89, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Think about it. God settled it in heaven, has recorded it on the earth, preserved it for us. We still hold it in our hands. Thank God for the Bible this evening. Amen. John was given the instructions to write the revelation Write it in a book. I'm glad we've got the book of the Revelation, but it's not Revelation only. It's all of the Word of God, the whole Bible. I'm glad that God has chosen to give us a book. Amen. And so these are instructions. Record the Word of God. Write it in a book. And then here's another uh, interesting thing that, that uh, I think that, that you'll enjoy seeing. And that is that in the instructions that... Jesus has given to John now, he noticed he was given an outline. John was helped. The Lord helped him in writing this book of the Revelation. He was given an outline. Look at verse number 19. Verse number 19. And notice how that Jesus says to him, Write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. There's the outline. Jesus gives it to John to record, to write it down, to write the book of Revelation by. If you think of it like this, he says, write the things, and, and, and if, you're, if you're thinking of an outline, Roman number one, which thou hast seen. Roman number two, and the things which are. Roman number three, and the things which shall be hereafter. Three points. Uh, we don't have a point here, but we got the three points. Amen. He gives them the three points uh, of an outline uh, for the writing of the book of Revelation. And think about it. The book of Revelation really perhaps is the only book in the Bible that clearly has a divinely uh, inspired outline of all of its contents. 
Because you'll notice, and, and, and this is still introductory matters that we're looking at this evening, but you'll notice as you read it, and as you go through it, you can go back to this verse in verse number 19, and you'll see that this is how the book of Revelation is outlined, how it is divided up. Notice this, uh, the first point, the things which thou hast seen, you find that in chapter 1 as we're looking at in the beginning of our study. The vision that God uh, has given to John. The vision that the Lord has, has given to him. Uh, you'll notice how that it says in beginning with verse 12. Drop down to verse number 12. I'll read a little bit more here. How that John says, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. His countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Let's go ahead and, and finish reading. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. And he says, The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Jesus told him, Write the things that you've seen. And referring to this vision that he has at the outset, recorded here in chapter number 1. And then he told them to write the things which are. The things which are. This would be chapter 2 and chapter 3 and those special messages or those letters to the seven churches of Asia that covers chapter 2 and chapter 3. Understand this, and, and we'll perhaps look at it a little bit more uh, as we move into those chapters in our study. But those letters to the churches in, in Asia, we need to understand that in John's day and when he was in exile on that island, on that Isle of Patmos, every single one of those churches were in existence and they were operating. John was to record this book of the Revelation and send it to them. Send it to the churches of Asia, those seven churches. The book of the Revelation was to be read uh, in those churches. And so these are the things which are. There were those seven churches. They were there then. Uh, it was at that time. And remember how that we saw uh, that the Lord had told John uh, later towards the end, don't seal this book up. The time is at hand. And so as soon as it was finished, John had the responsibility to get the, to get the book to the churches. Amen. And we ought to be so glad that he did that. Because you see, it was in doing that that those churches would have, would have the, the book. The churches would have the copy. The copies would be kept. The copies would be copied uh, down through the years all the way down to where we have a, a text, where we have a Bible, where we have a Word of God. John was instructed to do that, to write this down, write it in a book, and send it to the churches. And so chapters 2, chapter 3, the things which, which are those churches in Asia at that time and sending the message of the revelation to them. But then he said also to write of the things which shall be hereafter. The things which shall be hereafter. That begins with chapter 4. Revelation chapter number 4. The things which shall be hereafter and it's through the rest of the book. Chapter 4 through chapter 22 is the third point in the outline. The things which shall be hereafter. And, and that is, of course, substantiated by what John heard. If you'll notice chapter 4 and verse number 1, and, and Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, how John writes, after this. Now that's after he has given the letters to, 
to write down these letters to the seven churches in Asia. After the, se the letters to the seven churches, John says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Did you see that? Point number three in the outline. Things which must be hereafter. And John says, Immediately I was in the Spirit. Behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And then it just continues on, and we'll see it as we, as we study, and we get to that chapter, that fourth chapter. From chapter 4 on, the scene shifts from John's day and John's time, and the time of those seven churches in Asia. The scene shifts now to heaven, and the things that will be coming on the earth in the latter days, days beyond John's time, days even beyond our time, but days that I really believe that are not far away. Amen. Because the time, as he said, the time is at hand. And so you see, in, in the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, John is chosen by the Lord to record the Word of God in verse 2, to write it in a book in verse number 11. And then he was given an outline in verse number 19. He's given the responsibility to be sure and get this book to the, to the, the seven churches, to send it to the seven churches. He sends the special messages with it, or the special messages are in chapters 2 and 3. But John had the responsibility of completing the entire book and sending the entire revelation uh, to those churches in that day. And so John heard the voice that said, come up hither in chapter 4 and verse number 1. And he says that there is a door that was opened in heaven. What do you suppose that that represents? It must be, I believe without any doubt, a reference to the rapture of the church. Amen. It is a, it is a reference to the rapture of the church. He heard the voice that said, come up hither. I remind you of what will be happening in, in, uh, in, in the near time. I really think in our lifetime. And 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, verse number 16, where it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. It's an interesting uh, thought in, in studying the book of Revelation is that you can, you can really understand that from chapter 4, verse 1 and on through the rest of the book, through Revelation chapter 22 at the end of the book, from chapter 4 and on, you really don't have the church in view at all. You do in chapter 2 and chapter 3 because you have the letters that are special messages being sent to those seven churches. But you'll notice as you study it that you really don't have the church in view at all. Not the church on the earth uh, anyway. Not the church as we know it today. Not local churches, such as those seven that are, are mentioned there in chapter 1 and then the letters in chapter 2 and chapter 3. After that, the scene changes totally. And it's about things that are happening in heaven. And it's about things that are coming to this earth. These are all the events that will follow the catching away of the church. The rapture of the church. When that trumpet sounds, Jesus steps out on the cloud and calls us home to be with Him. And the Bible says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And it is good comfort, especially, especially if you've read the book of Revelation and you, have a, you take a literal interpretation of the book, which I think is the best way to do it. You take a literal interpretation of the book and you understand the kind of things and events 
and happenings, the things that are going to be coming to this earth, it's a great comfort to know that you don't have to be here. Amen. It's a great comfort to know that we will not be here during that time. And it's interesting too, how that in Revelation chapter 4, when all these things are being, uh, are, are, are being shown, being revealed of what's going to be coming on the earth from Revelation chapter 4 and, and on, and, uh, and you'll notice how John, John who was one of his disciples, John who was uh, a, a beloved uh, apostle, John, who was no doubt born again, saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. John, who is in heaven today, amen. That is talking about this John. John, who like you and like me, were saved by his grace and is a part of his church, of his bride that's going to be united with him uh, forever. Uh, John, who is one of us. In fact, John will tell us in his writing in the book of Revelation uh, that he is one of us. He is a servant uh, of the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. He, he, he's one of us. And you'll notice how that in chapter 4, and when, as, as we're moving into the scene of the things taking place in the heavens and the things that will be coming upon this earth. Where is John? Well, in the body, physically, we would understand he's still exiled on that island in Patmos. But where is he really? Well, he tells us. Revelation 4, verse 2. He hears a voice that says, Come up hither. And then he says, And immediately I was in the Spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Now John says he's in the Spirit. But where is he in the Spirit? He's in heaven, amen. He is in heaven. He is a picture of, where, uh, of you and of me on that day that is coming soon when the trumpet sounds and Jesus steps on the cloud and we hear his voice as well and a voice that maybe would say to us also, come up hither and we will go up to meet with him in heaven in glory. That's where, that's where John is from Revelation chapter 4 on. And John is given this revelation to, uh, to write it down, put it in the book. And you know the thing about it is, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the instructions that John was given, that he was, he, that he was successful in fulfilling the instructions. Amen? We know that he was absolutely successful to perfection of fulfilling the instructions he was given. You say, how do you know that, preacher? Because I've got it in my hand. I've got it in my hand. It's been preserved. It's been kept. We have that very revelation that John recorded. And God has preserved it. And we have it in our hands. He successfully completed the instructions that was given to him. What a great man the disciple John was. Amen. He fulfilled these instructions we're so glad that he did because if you would notice in verse 3 of chapter 1 once again, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Because John was so successful in completing the instructions, you and I can have the blessings of God by reading and hearing and keeping this book. Amen? Amen. I tell you, we owe John a lot of thanks today. Amen? And we know the Lord. We owe the Lord great thanks and, and praise and, and appreciation today. Amen? Let's go ahead and stand together, our heads bowed and our eyes closed for prayer, and thank the Lord for what He has given to us in this wonderful book of the Revelation John successfully recorded the Word of God, wrote it down in a book. 
It's, it was sent to those churches. It's been preserved. We have it. He followed the outline that the Lord Jesus gave to him. And so therefore, we can say it's not the revelation of John. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for the word of God today. And thank you for your revelation, Lord Jesus, that you gave to John. Thank you for, for John, for how, how faithful and how successful he was at following your instructions because he wrote it down, the, the word of God, and he wrote it in a book. And he followed the outline that you gave him, Lord Jesus. He followed it perfectly. And then, Lord, you have so blessed us to preserve this word and have kept it for us. We now have it in our hands in, this, in, our, in our Bibles. Lord, thank you for your word tonight. We pray that, Lord, that in these last days that your word would go forth. We know of the promise in the word of God that it will go forth and will not, it will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish what you send it to do. Lord, we pray that in these last days that you would indeed send your word forth to accomplish great things still. The salvation of souls, the changing of lives, to send in your church's revival in these last days. Lord, we anticipate great things as we look for your soon return. The time that we'll be called up together to meet you in the air and be with you forever. Lord, thank you for the word of God. We pray that you'd help us to be faithful to it, to obey it, to apply it to our lives and to live by it and to share it with others so that they might know, that they might be saved, that they also might be ready for the revelation. For, they might be ready for your return. And Lord, we'll thank you and praise you for all these things in Jesus' name we do humbly pray. Amen and amen. Let's sing a song together, Brother Tim. Page 270.